going to turn off. Please state your full name. Chester Ludwig. My name is Julia Medore. Today is May 7, 2009. What branch did you serve in? The United States Army. How long? Well, I was in uh, from 1934 uh, to uh, 1945. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I was uh, in the National Guard, National Guard unit in New York City. What does it mean to be in the National Guard? Well, it's the first ones that are called when the government wants you. What was your highest rank? Staff Sergeant. What theater were you in? Beg your pardon? What theater were you in? The uh, Coast Artillery. In fact, in that blue envelope, you'll see the uh, cannon that uh, used to be uh, our weapon. Pull it out. And that was taken at uh, Fort Ontario, Oswego, New York. That's where we used to go for training. Very cool. So. You travel to many places. Do you, what was your favorite? Favorite? Yeah. <laughs> Favorite was, was Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Being home. Good. But uh, Australia was nice. Wow. Australia. Is, yeah, we we were. Uh, <clears throat> we left Brooklyn, and it took us uh, almost a a month and a half to get to uh, uh, Australia, Melbourne, and we uh, got off the ships there. We marched five miles. And we uh, went to Albert Park because they heard that the Japanese were going to come and bomb that area because it, had, it was the shipping base. And they had all, uh, all the troop ships in there. So uh, rather than have the troops on a the ship, they, we marched to the park, then marched back the next morning. And we were billeted in people's homes, not in barracks or tents or anything like that. We ate in the largest baker in Melbourne. His family, he had uh, two or three daughters and his wife and himself. And uh, every day we ate at the, in the main dining room at their home and they put us up great. And we uh, went through a lot of basic training there and, and things like that because we were waiting to move out again. And from there we went to uh, New Caledonia. And uh, there we set up our guns and everything. We had to wait till they were come by ship. And uh, we went to uh, a private estate that was owned by a doctor, French doctor. And he let the government use the upper part of his property, which was up on a hill. And that's our best place to fire the big cannons because we took in the harbor and the mine layers would go out, the mine sweepers would go out, and if the ships are coming in and wait there and remove the uh, uh, netting and then bring it back again. And uh, that harbor was always uh, had PBYs, uh, transports. Uh, freighters and stuff like that. And then from there we went to uh, to uh, the uh, to uh, Guadalcanal. In Guadalcanal we stayed there. We went over to uh, three days. We were on Guadalcanal. We went 25 miles over to uh, Savo Island, which was like on the uh, entrance of. Uh, uh, of Guadalcanal, so if the ships came down the slot to uh, go to, uh, to Tulagi was their base, our, our base, Americans, and they would uh, pass us up and they would get into uh, for a ship repair or whatever, supplies. And uh, we stayed there quite a while, we set up guns and all that stuff, but uh, it wasn't uh, of any use, mainly was the infantry, Marine Corps infantry. They were the big uh, uh, units. And uh, from there we went to, uh, they moved us to uh, the Fiji Islands. 
and we were in the. Uh, you got that uh, paper bat? I do. Yeah. Have it all written down on a card. It's a card, a Dutch card. I've just got my, can I have my glasses, please? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, that's good, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we arrived in New Caledonia. We left New Caledonia, arrived at Guadalcanal, leave like, arrived at Savile Island. I think it was, uh, uh, Good Friday, we got to the canal, and we didn't get off and uh, go to uh, Savile Island until uh, uh, the day before Easter, the Saturday. Uh, okay, leave. We left Savile Island. No, we left. Yeah, we left Savile Island and arrived at Suva, in the Fiji Islands. And uh, Suva, we left uh, sail for California. California to Angel Island, from Angel, uh, Angel Island to New York, and uh, we arrived in New York, Camp Upton, we were out on Long Island, and after 21 days, uh, uh, we left uh, to come back to Camp Upton, and arrived, no, uh, we stayed there 21 days, and then we went to uh, Camp Butner, North Carolina. Left Camp Butner to Camp Crowder, Missouri, what a dump that was. <laughs> <laughs> and we were discharged uh, to uh, Camp Crowder and arrived home on uh, uh, 1944, December 9th. So, it's all here. So, whatever I told you to stay, I made me maybe make a mistake on what I told you now as far as these, because this is up to date. <laughs> But that's the story. What were your general duties? Beg your pardon? What were your general duties? Oh, well, originally I was a supply sergeant in New York City. And when we went to Camp Pendleton, Virginia, uh, Virginia Beach, uh, I was still the supply sergeant. But in peacetime before the war, I worked in the New York State Arsenal in Brooklyn. And I was in a uh, communications unit where we repaired the telephones and switchboards and stuff like for the National Guard units because we were all National Guard. And this building ran a whole square block in Brooklyn. <laughs> we had long blocks in Brooklyn. <laughs> and uh, it was about six stories high. So uh, if you were in Utica, in the armory, and you needed clothing for some say 10 guys or something, you sent them a request to us and we would fill the order and then you sent a truck down from your armory, pick the stuff up and bring it to Utica. And you sign out the receipt for the uh, delivery of the uh, uniforms. So we were more or less a supply for and a repair unit for the National Guard in the state of New York. No matter where it was, Binghamton, Niagara Falls, wherever the unit was, if you were able to bring it down to us, we, uh, okay, if you weren't, then we'd come up and get it and bring it down, transport it on a flatbed or something. And uh, then they changed me to do the repairs and stuff, took me out of the supply sergeants and made me a staff sergeant on uh, the uh, equi telephone equipment, our switchboards, our, we had to lay the lines. Communications. If you were on one end of the island, she was on the other end of the island. All the, everything came into the switchboard. So if you wanted to talk to her, or she wanted to talk to you, just hook her up, bring me, and the plate would drop, and that that open, and put put it in and uh, see. It. But uh, you see the guys in infantry when they have a like a real wire, a little roll of wire, and they run that out because they're not going to pick it up again. They just leave it and, like with us, 
we once we emplace it, we leave it there and uh, it's used and then we don't take it back either. Right. Did you have combat experience? We had the experience, but uh, it wasn't in combat because we were an artillery unit. Our artillery units were, when the ships would come in to go to Tulagi, they would have to pass Cape Esperance was on uh, Guadalcanal and, and we were Savile Island on the other side. So in other words, you had to pass us. Two sets of cannons would be shooting at you, at the enemy. And then the, uh, the they sink us, so we sink them. <laughs> but uh, they would get by and they'd go to Tulagi for their whatever they got, supplies or ammunition or more of the torpedoes or whatever. So that was, uh, we guarded that, that passage more or less. Thank God it never happened because, uh, like they say, uh, <laughs> there was a lot of men there. A lot of guys would have been killed. Uh, Did you like your officers? Oh, yeah, yeah. But to see, most of our officers, or all our officers, were from New York. They were our National Guard officers, so we knew them well. My Captain Pappas, uh, Captain Pappas, he was a florist in New York, in uh, the wholesale markets where the flowers come in from North Carolina or everything, they brought in there into the store, and uh, then they sold in the morning, early morning. If you had a, a florist, you'd be there at five, six o'clock in the morning picking up your flowers. And uh, one worked to the post office, and uh, the others are here and there, and, but uh, we, everybody liked the, board, the uh, officers, everybody. This thing you see on television, oh, I hate this guy or something like that. That's, that's too... <laughs> Did you receive any medals? No, no, no nobody had medals. We, we had a ribbon that uh, designated the South Pacific and stuff like that, or the European, or... Uh, in uh, uh, Germany, if you were there, or France, you had a ribbon, and, and that was all you had. If you were a good, uh, you know, a great soldier, like uh, Audie Murphy, he uh, deserved all the medals. And uh, that's the story there. <laughs> what is the most inspiring thing that you experienced during your service? Beg your pardon? What was the most inspiring experience for you? Hmm. Just being there, I guess. Yeah, just being there, I guess. We knew one another. Of course, we were all from the city. Guys from the Bronx, from the Brooklyn, from Queens, from Long Island, and uh, that's the army they chose. Who will you remember most? Beg your pardon? Who will you remember most? Who do I remember most? Mm hmm. Mm. Well, the officers, they were good. Like the general came over one time to inspect the installations after they were set up and all, and he wanted to take my captain on his staff. He wouldn't go. Is that me? <laughs> This is, these are my boys, and this is where I am. But uh, all, all the boss, all the officers were great. What did you think when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Beg your pardon? What did you think when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Oh, somebody should have been awake. Mm -hmm. Somebody should have been awake. Whether it's the generals or what, I don't know, but somebody should have been awake. To lose all those ships and the men that are encased in that in steel. What is your opinion on the at atomic bomb? Well, if you need it, you need it. I don't care who you who you, who it is, white or black or, uh, or green or uh, Chinese or Japanese. If you need it, you need it. 
rather than to save our guys. How did you keep in touch with those at home? Well, we had the uh, mail. We had the email. I think it was email they called it or something. The email. But uh, anyway, uh, the mail too, and it had to be censored by an officer each day. So before you, the letter was sealed, it uh, had to be, be read by one of the officers. Because they struck out different things, you know. Couldn't tell people where you were or anything. How did you get home? You mean from overseas? Mm -hmm. We got on a, 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 a large trans uh, freight, a uh, large transport, and I can't think of the name of it. And uh, took us right to uh, uh, California to Oakland, and from Oakland we took a, a ferry, an army ferry, went across to uh, Angel Island, and we stayed there three days. We got clean uniforms and stuff like that. Then they put us on a train and uh, give us a ticket and everything, and we wound up in Camp uh, Upton, Long Island. I have, can I ask questions now, or are we going <clears> to... <throat> um, what type of ship were you on? Well, when I went over, I went over on a Graceline ship. It belonged to the Graceline, and it was a uh, cruise ship, beautiful ship. We uh, ate in the mess hall. Naturally, you stand, you don't sit because there's too many men. And the whole roof would open up. And you could see the sky. Beautiful, beautiful cruise ship, that's why I say you, you, they had three of them. The Santa Elena, the, uh, I forget what, what was I on? Santa Elena? Santa Rosita, is that what I read? You were on Santa, Santa Rosita? Rosa? No, Rosa. Rosa. Rosa, Santa Rosa? Santa Rosa, yeah. And I had Santa Elena and I had another ship. And uh, we, when we boarded that ship, we went right to uh, 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 Australia. And we went through the Panama Canal. It was at night time. Our ship went through that time. Others went through during the daytime. And uh, it was quite an experience. Every morning, just at daybreak, everybody up on deck, because if it was Japanese submarines, they could torpedo a ship and you couldn't get out fast enough. This here where everybody's on deck with the life jacket, they just go overboard. So. so then you were in the operation of the island hopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, was, yeah. As you went through. Yeah. How many days were you at sea at the most? Well, from... Uh, I think it was 38 days from uh, Brooklyn to Australia. I think it was 38 days. And then from there we went to uh, New Caledonia. We stayed there quite a while. Set up guns there and everything. And do you remember how many miles you were on, like your ship went that you oh, were on? Oh, no, that's something I wouldn't know. Yeah, because no. that's one of the things we have found out from other veterans that we've interviewed that you know, different time frames, so... But I guess on a map, but uh, if you go, say, from Brooklyn to uh, Australia, Melbourne, that would be uh, almost accurate, you know. Yeah, that would be, I mean... I don't know how, <laughs> how they work the sea mileage and yeah. land right. mileage. <laughs> But that's, uh, that's the canon that uh, we have, and that's uh, those guys there, that's three gun crews. Rather than take uh, one group, uh, group at a time, they took the three at all at one time. Motley crew. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Uh -huh. the, this is in Ontario, that's Fort a, Ontario, that's in Ontario, in Oswego. Yeah. Is this just when you were uh, training? Yes, yes. That's uh, every summer. We used to leave New York City and the pilot to the trucks so and we drive all the way to last week on New York. I've been there. <laughs> now they ended up using Fort Ontario as a relocation center for a lot of the Jewish refugees. Yeah, 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 yeah. From In fact, Europe. My granddaughter went to uh, uh, Oswego University and uh, I went to see her one day. 
and she, they took, us, took me to uh, Fort Ontario, which is right down the road a little bit. And I said, what the hell are the barracks? God. Everything was torn down. Oh my God, I, I remember the evening parades. You'd rush back from the gun sites and stuff or wherever, and you get dressed full uniform and you'd march down to the uh, parade ground, you parade ground, drop the flag, then you come back, march, then you go to eat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the barracks are gone, everything's gone. Oh, it was beautiful there in the summertime. Yeah. That's where you go. So then you were there, were you there before or after the refugees were brought in? From the hall? We were there before. You were there before? Yeah, okay. that's when, okay. uh, when uh, we used to have the training, yeah. During, because you're wearing the, um, the guard, right? Yeah. So that's what, their, their training sessions, they right. would go there. Okay. That and makes then sense my then. captain was on a board uh, to build uh, uh, Camp Drum. Oh. Yeah. At that time, it wasn't Camp Drum, it was something else. And he, uh, he was the architect. Of course, in the state arsenal, they had uh, the finance officer, they had the planning officer, which he was, and he drew up the plan for that camp. But uh, during the war, they tore a lot of it down and rebuilt it again, like just for the war brides and stuff like that. Right. right. So now, how old were you when you joined the National Guard then? <laughs> I was 16. You were six, okay. 18. Uh, 19. <laughs> and that was in, you said, 30, 1934. 34, okay. Yeah. So then, you be, so you were on the National Guard from 34... To the next enlistment. Which would be in 41, when uh, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor? No, every three years. Every three years, okay, enlistment. all right. Was, but uh, naturally you didn't enlist again because you were in the service already. So they uh, just forgot about re-enlistments. Re okay. So then it was after Pearl Harbor, then that was when you were That's, sent to Australia yeah, and the yeah. active duty yeah. part of it came in. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, I was just trying to get a time frame. Well, no, they, uh, uh, we were in Camp Pendleton, Virginia Beach before Pearl Harbor. Okay. Because we had a recruit. We were, the government, I guess, told uh, the National Guard uh, commanders and the, the Army to recruit, recruit. We had a recruiting week in the Army, and we had people come in and sign up and meet us here at such and such a date, and they would go with us to uh, Fort, uh, Fort Dix was the first place, so that was overnight. We got a train and we went to uh, Virginia Beach, and that's where we stayed for, uh, until we moved to, uh, until the war broke out. I wanted to know what was life like when you came back. How um, once you got back here, what was it like for you? Well, <laughs> I had to get a job. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, my first job was uh, uh, with Grunner Aircraft, and uh, it was a good job. The only thing was they were paying you eighty-five cents an hour. So two Marines and I and uh, were working in the uh, machine shop, which I love because I love to work around machinery. And uh, uh, when uh, the war was over, which was about eight months later, uh, they announced over the speakers, this will be the last day you're here, go home and we'll send you a card if we want you back. So everybody got a card, the three of us. And we met, and we said, geez, 85 cents an hour, the hell with them, I ain't going to work for 85 cents an hour. So uh, we had a large building in New York City that was the Veterans Administration, and that was on 23rd, uh, 24th Street and uh, 7th Avenue. It was about 10, 10 11 stories. And uh, I went up there to look for a job, because they were supposed to uh, give you a job. So I walked into the uh, offices and geez, everybody was, you had got a number and you sat down. And lo and behold, one of the guys that uh, was at the desk 
was a lieutenant commander that my captain got in uh, chummy with, and that's how we got a gas-driven refrigerator <laughs> on, on Guadalcanal from him. And we traded bananas in <laughs> the refrigerator. But uh, he says, I got a, a few places to send you. So he sent me to one place I didn't even go in. It was a machine shop in Brooklyn, underneath the sidewalk almost. It was down in the basement. And I looked in from the, from the sidewalk outside. I said, this is not for me. So I went back and told him. He says, what? I got another one for you, Long Island City. That one was good. Beautiful. I stayed there until I applied to be uh, for the uh, police department test. And uh, I worked there until I was appointed, and that was it. But it uh, wasn't easy to get a job, because all the machine shops, they were going to stop making uh, equipment. So guns and stuff, I guess up here too, Savage and all those arm, arms places up here were, uh, you know, cutting down. So. Did you have, when you got back um, and you got, you came into the city, is that where? Um, yeah, you, I, I worked out. What was it like, was there a huge welcome or, you know, was there a big welcoming? Um, but city to me it didn't change. Right. Maybe because I lived there and right. stuff like that, but to me it didn't change. The buses were running, the, the trains were running, this was running and that was running, stores were open, Macy's was open, Gibbles <laughs> was open, and all those big places. So uh, it wasn't that bad. The only thing was to get a job. Right. Now, do you have um, any memories of anything that was funny that happened? like, uh, like? Did you do the whole, um, oh, now I've lost the, what that was called, the King Neptune, the crossing the equator from Pollywog to Shellback? Oh, they had that Did on the ship, yeah, but uh, everybody didn't go for it, you know. You have a couple of thousand men on the ship, but it's not, <laughs> there's not much room. Right. Like uh, in, my, in my cabin, I, there was five of us. And uh, I had the top bunk, the first sergeant had the bunk below me, and... Another guy had uh, the other the other three guys were on the other side, and next door to us was uh, officers. We had a chaplain. He was great. Had I had, I had communion in the bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> not communion, but com uh, the confession. Right. Yeah, well, because of the other officers, right. you know. So right. he's come in in here. He's put his tie and everything on. <laughs> okay. And what about leave? Like when you had, you know, a few days leave. Oh well. What uh, did you? What did you do? Leave was uh, I got married. <laughs> yeah, I got married on one leave, and that was when I was in Camp Button, North Carolina. Right. Uh, not Camp Button, North Carolina. Camp Button, uh, Fort Lee, Virginia, Virginia. We had to uh, send a group of men over to open that camp up, because that was a, a medical. Uh, camp for doctors and stuff. So we had to be there when the uh, carpenters were working and the steam fitters and all that stuff. We had a beautiful major. Oh, and we, they were sent us 90 of us over from, from my regiment. And we got over there and uh, some of the barracks were up and we had no heat and it was winter time. So uh, we went to mass one Sunday morning and we told uh, the Major, he says, how, how are you guys doing? So we told him about the story about the heat. He says, what? You got no heat? He gives the keys to his car <laughs> to swipe. He says, here they are, I'll see you later. Let's go, guys. So we get in. And he walks into the office. I thought the door was going to come off. <laughs> he, says, he says, you goddamn guys. He says, I'll be at the board tomorrow. If you don't get the men over there to fix them boilers up so they, those guys have some heat in there. And she's by, they dropped everything and run over and they hooked up the furnaces and stuff like that. Then we had heat, we had hot water, take a shower and everything. Oh, nice. So it was great, yeah. So things like that, you know, that you remember that's funny. Right. But uh, my leaves were, you know, all, uh, they weren't much because you, you didn't get too many days. If you got a weekend pass, it was a big deal. And they traveled half the time. Right.
did they let you off the ship, like, to go to different islands and that type of thing? Did you ha do any of that? Well, so beg your pardon? Well, like, did they let you off the ship to go visit any of the islands oh, that no, you went no, through? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, when we got off the ship, that was it, that was, you, uh, set up pup tents and sat, sat on the ground or laid on the ground for two or three days until you got the big tents up and you were awakened during the day getting your uh, get them big guns up. Right. Yeah, wow. And they have to be moved by a, tra by a tractor. They're pretty heavy. The tractor is massive. Isn't that the usual? Yeah. Do you have anything else you'd like to mention on your role in World War II? Beg your pardon? Do you have anything else you'd like to say on your role in World War II? No. Like I say, I wasn't in, you know, any action because uh, the foot soldier did that stuff. Right. And we were, we were there to put, cover the harbor. So no, nobody would come in. In fact, uh, uh, every night uh, at, uh, we had a big uh, seaplane base. And uh, every night the uh, sailors would go out with containers of uh, coffee and they were glued to that PBY. They must have had about 15 of them. And in case an raid uh, an attack was coming, they would warm up the uh, PBYs for the pilots, because everybody was on land then, and uh, the uh, guys would come in and have their coffee and they'd be awake all night. Oh. Well, thank you very much. That well, was like wonderful. I say, if there's any, anything else, uh, you know, do you want to you tell can us, give me a call. <laughs> you want to talk about, just tell us what those, those, are they all the same? They're about that gun, right? The guns that you guys saw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the, they're all the same. Yeah. That's what Ontario Oswego. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to show them in the camera so that okay. we can have a. Do you want me to hold it for you or anything? Um, you know what? I'm just going to see what I can do here. <laughs> These are the guys. These, you're in this picture somewhere, aren't you? I'm not in there. I'm you're not? Oh, okay. I was probably laying wire somewhere. <laughs> All right, and then we have the gun. There's that one. This is a neat trick. <sighs> you did a good job. Makes a lot of noise when it goes off. I'm sure the it's. I see that it's secured to the ground because of the kickback. It gives that so much power. The noise must and be. No amazing. smoking around. Ah. So the gunpowder is oh, in yeah. the containers. I think I got it. Good job. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have found that the other veterans that we have been interviewing, everybody has a different experience. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. One of our veterans that we interviewed who was from Vietnam, he was in the Vietnam oh, War. Oh, Vietnam. Don't and talk about I asked him the question, were, was there a particular movie like that's been made that is reflective of Vietnam better than others? And he said, I love this quote that he said, wherever you were in Vietnam, depending upon the time period and where you were, you experienced a different war. And that's kind of what we're finding with World War II. Everybody, because we've interviewed a lot of gentlemen that were on ships, and they all have different experiences. Oh, yeah, There's yeah. A, it's a different war, it's a different experience wherever right. you were. So yeah. your experience is very different than some of the other men that we have interviewed. So. Vietnam was the worst war. Yeah. Worst war. It was yeah. worse than World War II. Vietnam. Those guys took a beating. Yeah, they did. But uh, there was a, 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 a movie out there with Audie Murphy. And uh, it, uh, he started as a kid. Nobody wanted him. The Marines didn't want him. The Army didn't want him. He was underage. But finally he got in. And uh, he was the most decorated soldier in uh, World War II. In fact, the general that decorated him a few times was on. And uh, he spoke about him, and Audie Murphy's uh, buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Really? Yeah.
Yeah. Have you ever been to his grave before? Beg your pardon? Have you been to his grave at Arlington? No, 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 no. They have a nice um, presentation there for it. I, I've had the good fortune of being able to be down there and oh, see it. Right. And they have a very nice presentation of it right there. Well, um, I've been to uh, uh, Arlington National, but uh, as far as... Uh, Looking around at different graves, no. Yeah, the, on the tours they always take yeah, you to that yeah, one. Yeah. So um, I've been able to see that, but yeah. Um, no, I mean that's why one of the questions that I asked you about the, the oh, King was... Neptune and the crossing of the equator. Because, oh yeah, the, yeah. Because yeah. Of the other gentleman, there's a couple other gentlemen we interviewed, and they went through the whole like yeah. it's almost like a fraternity prank, is right. like the hazing kind of you know, experience. Was, oh, I don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they one one of the gentlemen they sprayed him with um, salt water, oh. and then they poked him with an electric prod. Oh, that was one. There was another one, um, Mr. Leonard. They greased him all up, and they had to slide <laughs> all over the ship. I mean, you know, it was sounds a, like a fraternity. It was. It was all fraternity like prank things. And oh. but then they got a big certificate, you know, that yeah, with yeah. King Neptune on it. And, <laughs> That they lived through it? That they went from being a polywog to a shellback is oh, what it was. Okay. So I'm going to show um, this. Um, the It's over in Europe. Oh, I think I have to go back. Do you want me to, yeah. Why don't I pull it back? And can you show the back? Because the back of it shows women. Oh, I see. You're pulling this back. I'll pull this back. And now we've got It's over in Europe. Okay. Yeah, you got it? I don't have the bottom line. Let me just zoom in on that. Okay, perfect. All right. And then on the back... These are all women. It's a picture of women kneeling in front of a church. They all they got down to their knees when they heard it. And let's let's look at the headlines up here. Five hundred thousand in Times Square. Wow! And then we go down. Okay, wait. I can't. I want to zoom in on that. I'm just getting the thing speed. It's gonna fall. God. Okay. Remember. <laughs> Probably would have been better off with a uh, photo stop machine, maybe. I'm thinking that. Um, this has a zoom, by the way. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. just in case you were wondering. Mm -hmm. You did teach me that one time before. And this is... The, no, that's... That's, that's 1995. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's so about But that's about the bond. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this was great. Do you want Do you want me to stop? I think. I think, I think very good. We thank thank you very much. Yes, we appreciate wonderful. it. Wonderful. Anytime, anytime.